Welcome to What Did Jesus Say Christian Talk Show. I'm Reverend Belinda Stokes from We Will Go Ministries. Our mission is to teach Christians who God is, who they are in God, teach them how to discover their God-given spiritual gifts, talents, and purpose. This is my co-host, Evangelist Keith Kelly from We Will Go Ministries. Amen. Thank you, Sister Belinda. Says we will go ministries. We are assigned uh, to really get the gospel out and get the missionary knowledge and serving leaders into churches and uh, people groups locally and internationally and to develop training grounds to reach the unreached that are in the world. That's what we will go does. That sounds like an awesome mission, my brother. In today's technological digital world, we are bombarded with so many voices through the internet, the media, celebrities, politicians, even our family and friends. Some of these are good voices, but many are bad voices. Mm -hmm. So on each monthly episode, Evangelist Keith and I will introduce you to the greatest voice of all, as we talk about what did Jesus say about a particular topic. And the greatest voice is Jesus. Right now, we're gonna have my wife, Jackie O'Kelly, sing one of her songs that she wrote. Uh, and she also performs all over the world. She's an international gospel artist. She's a charting gospel artist also. She's an artist and she's an author. So we're gonna have her sing one of her songs right now. Every promise that he said Forgetting those things behind me Reaching forth for the things before me You hold my world in your hand You hold my world in your hand So by your power I will stand Trusting you no matter what it takes While trusting you I'll walk by faith I'm pressing for the upward way Heights I'm gaining every day Reaching forth for what's ahead Preaching the gospel just like Jesus
Thank you, Jackie O, for blessing us in song today. What an anointed vessel of God you are. And the song that you sang goes right along with our topic of today, which is what did Jesus say about the Great Commission? And Keith, I know this topic is dear to oh, you yeah. because it coincides with the mission Amen. of We Will Go Ministries. You know, when I hear about a sale, I know you don't do that. Men don't act like women when it comes to shop. But when I hear about a sale, oh, I go and tell my friends, my family. I might even post it on Facebook. Right. And so this is what we as Christians have to do. We have to go and tell everyone Everybody. about the good news of Jesus Christ. That is, that is no doubt. You got to tell everybody about it. So let's start right now. Let's, let's go right to the scriptures. How about Matthew? Uh, we're going to be in Matthew 28, 18, all the way through uh, 20, okay? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Wow. You know... You ever heard of uh, Muhammad Ali? Oh yeah, sure. What did he always say about himself? Oh, he, did, he said he was the greatest. He always said he was the greatest. Right, he said he was the greatest. Now, he didn't quantify it. He no. said, I'm the greatest. The greatest what? I'm boxer. sure he meant, I'm the greatest boxer. Right, but that's right. But the greatest person, the greatest leader in all the world was Jesus that's right. the Christ. Amen. The son of God. And as a good leader, you communicate with the people that you're leading. That's right. And so, and you prepare them for their assignment. Right. Jesus prepared his disciples for three years. Mm. And as he's getting ready to go back to glory, mm -hmm. he had sent them a word to meet him in Galilee. That's right. And so, as you know, the 11 met him in Galilee on the very mountain where God had, where Jesus had originally appointed them. Mm -hmm. And he gives them four directives. He says, go, go. make disciples, mm. baptize, and teach them. That's right. Go. Okay. I'm a, let me see. Go. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? Well, I coined a phrase. Mm -hmm. You want to hear it? Yeah, let me hear it. My phrase is, <laughs> There's a sinner everywhere you go. Mm. So wherever you go, you on assignment. Oh, that's right. And look, now I know you know this, there may even be some sinners in church. Oh, yeah. You know? For sure. And so we have to go. The church of today, we must get out of those four walls, take the gospel to the whole world. Don't you agree? I agree 100 percent. I mean, we got to have sinners in the church because you got to do an altar call before you can get them saved and well, they can accept Jesus into their heart. And Jesus also said to teach all nations. This is very interesting to me because a lot of times we get kind of in our own little world here, our own little bubble here. Uh, and we don't think about the out there, like what, who's out there that really needs to hear the gospel? Because that's what we're supposed to do. That's our commission is to go tell all nations. Now, we know for sure. I mean, data says there's 7.5 billion people in the world. Of the 7.5 billion people, 4.5 billion people are not Christians. Wow. And of that, I mean, you know, they're Muslims, they're Hindus. There's a hot, lot of different, you know, Buddha. There's a lot of different people out there. But then of the 1.5 billion, there's 1.5 billion people in the world that have never even heard about Jesus Christ. Mm. They live, die. They live, die, eat all, all their life and never hear about Jesus Christ. We have to have a burden for those people. I mean, if, the, if we want Jesus to come quickly, because he said, you know, the, all the nations are going to hear the word first, you know, are going to hear about him first before he comes back. If we have a zeal for him to come back, we want him to come back quickly, then we have to have a burden for the people that have never heard about Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm talking about there's a whole world out there in some kind, sort of capacity. We have to be a part of that, of reaching those people. So that is so important uh, to me. 
I know that's important for our very existence, for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to really get out and teach all the nations. Don't you agree? Yes, um, we have to make disciples. To, um, Keith, what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower of Christ, someone that has dedicated their life to Christ, uh, they've consecrated themselves, that is keeping the commandments of God, that's reading the Bible. I, this, this floors me. I, I don't, Blinda, I don't understand how people can say they're disciples and they love the Lord and, and you know, that God's blessing them and, you know, if they're not reading the Bible. How can you do that without reading the Bible and praying? I mean, that, that just floors me because people don't know the word. The Bible sits at a table in, the, in their house and they don't read the word. So that's a disciple, someone that's completely sold out. I like that. Sold out. That is so good. Je Jesus also said to them to baptize them right. in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to park there. Mm -hmm. You know, as Christians, God left us the Bible. I call the Bible the Zoe manual. Mm -hmm. Because it tells us how to have that God kind of life. That's right. Okay. And so we have to be taught. Our minds have to be renewed with the word. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do things biblically. That's right. Biblical baptism is immersion. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was um, baptized by John in the Jordan, mm -hmm. it says he came up out of the water right if you take a a a a, a, a bath mm -hmm. you gotta get you gotta go down in that water you gotta come out mm -hmm. and that's what biblical baptism is some there are some denominations mm -hmm. who sprinkle mm. and they say it's baptism mm -hmm. could be for them but it's not biblical baptism right, right. now also too there are some that say well if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, then you weren't baptized correctly and you may not be saved. Mm. But what's the name of this show? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said, Jesus said, mm -hmm. baptize them in the name of the Father. That's right. And of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Right. The son of God. That's right. He's the one that said that. That's right. And so because he's my Lord mm -hmm. and my Savior. That's right. I'm going to do what Jesus said. That's right. That's that's so important. I mean, I was, it makes me think about like when Philip was transformed. I mean, when Felix, Phillips was uh, and he, and he uh, met the eunuch or he met the Ethiopian. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and he says, and he says, here's water. Here's water right here. What does hindereth me to be baptized? You know, so he, so he had to be submerged into the water, you know, to be baptized. And also talks about teaching to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. Now, this right here is very interesting to me, Belinda, because so many people, they really try to forget about the commandments of God. I mean, they forget about what Jesus said to Come do. About the Ten Commandments? Well, no. And Jesus says in the Bible, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments, what he oh, said to okay. do. He said, keep my commandments, what Jesus said to do, oh, right. you know, and then, which it also encompasses the Ten Commandments. I mean, that, that's a part of it also. But, but Jesus goes on and talks about how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to walk uprightly. I mean, it says so many times in the Bible, it says, if you love me, I mean, follow, keep my commandments. You know, and John's in the, in the book of John, it says, and what is love? Because people always use, you know, they kind of say love. You know, this, you know, they use love as, uh, as long as you love and they use grace. I mean, they talk about grace, like, oh, yes, we're saved under grace, which we are. We're saved under grace, you know, not of works, lest any man should boast. But Paul also, Paul was very clear about that. He said that, I, you know, says, should we sin that grace should abound? He said, God forbid. God forbid. We're not supposed to be out there sinning and just be trying to, and you can do whatever we want to do. Now, let me tell you something. We all are in this to, you know, we to win it. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's no doubt about it. We all have our challenges and they come in. But, you know, but the bottom line is you've got to keep striving. And if you're not reading the Bible, if you're not praying, if you're not doing those things, Satan is way sharper than you are now. You, you can't have you can't fox the fox. Only one who can outfox Satan is Jesus Christ. And you have to be in his spirit. You have to be in his word. You have to be prayed up. You have to be seeking him every day. You've got to be winning souls. You've got to be going, telling people the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
That's another thing that just kind of blows me. How can churches, you know, how can you cannot have churches cannot go out and tell their congregation got to go? You got to bring somebody in here to, you know, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to. That's the commandment of God. Well, I, I think churches are doing that the more so and a lot you know the <laughs> internet yeah. now i personally i i love facebook right and i use it for ministry purposes that's right to get god might give me a word mm -hmm. and you know what did jesus say has a facebook page right and every day or every other day i put a scripture what did jesus say and so mm -hmm. i think the evangelism revival has hit you know slowly but sh people are going in fact uh, right. there's a church that sent a uh, a missions team right. to haiti on july 4. right and in uh in the fall they're going to kenya right and what's so wonderful in March, they're going on a mission trip to Israel. Right. I never heard of nobody going to Israel for to mission. do missions. Yeah. Usually it's for yeah. sightseeing. Right. But I, I just think that's so, so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, you get a lot of churches also basically that just, you know, and I don't want, you know, the, the bottom line is we're supposed to go. I mean, let, let me just put what Jesus said to do. Jesus said for everybody to go. Now, you know that technology is strong. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, 80% of the world is oral. They don't do any reading or anything, but give a testimony. Let me, let me, let me hear your testimony of salvation, Belinda. Well, I, um, my, my salvation, to, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. In fact, both of my great grandfathers were preachers. Mm -hmm. So there was never a time in my life where you know church was not a big part of it however as many young people do after high school i stopped going to church mm -hmm. the bright lights of the disco mm -hmm. caught my mm -hmm. attention and so i was away not the disco yeah i was disco sally <laughs> and now i'm holy ghost Pam. but anyway <laughs> um I was missing from the church. I wasn't saved, but I was mm -hmm. missing from the church for 13 years. But God knows how to get your attention. One of my first cousins died mm. at the age of 26. I was devastated. I was like, oh, my goodness, mm -hmm. I might be next. So I got back to the church and I, I was a financial planner at the time. And I went on an appointment and this lady, she had a bold spirit. Mm -hmm. I gave her my presentation. I'm trying to sell her some life insurance and some mutual funds. Okay. So after I finished my presentation, that woman looked me dead in my face and said, I listened to your presentation and now you're going to listen to mine. Mm -hmm. And she led me in the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, I, w I didn't really mean it, but mm -hmm. I said it to mm -hmm. placate her because I wanted to say it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the Bible says we will have what we say. Mm -hmm. God honored the fact that I did say it. Mm -hmm. And then later on, when I went back to church, God saved me. And mm. I just thank the Lord for that. And all I like to say to the devil now, how you like me now? <laughs> because when God <laughs> saves you and you yield to him where he's really Lord, mm -hmm. your life changes That's right. for the better. Mm -hmm. You, the, like people say, well, I, you know, I drink, I smoke, mm -hmm. and I don't really want to get that up. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Come as you are. Mm -hmm. God will deliver you. Mm -hmm. And he'll, you know, he'll give you... Um, He'll give you new desires, mm. you know? And so he changed, he does the work. Amen. If we could change ourselves, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need Jesus. He died in vain, but we know that Jesus did not die in vain. Mm -mm. He died to save every person mm -hmm. that's ever been born, no matter how uh, low down, mm -hmm. you know, what does that song say we sing on First Sunday? Mm -hmm. That the blood of Jesus, it reaches to the highest mountain. You yeah. can be a king, a queen, president, amen. Mm -hmm. And it, it flows to the lowest valley. Yeah, that's right. So no matter where you're stationed in life, mm -hmm. 
God loves you. Mm -hmm. And God wants to, uh, he wants to save everybody. Mm. And so those four directives go no. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Teach, mm -hmm. make disciples, followers of the Lord, mm -hmm. baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And he said, teach them whatever I've commanded them. And the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, all 66, this is what is the, it's not just the 10, right. but it's all mm -hmm. of them. But the great thing about God he knows that we're frail as dust. He knows we hard headed and stuff. Yeah. And so he made it simple. He mm. reduced it down to two commandments. Mm. You know what that is? No, tell me about it. Okay. I should love the Lord thy God. They, I knew you knew, brother. <laughs> I should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all Bring thy soul. Right. All right. Say it again. Say it again. I should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy spirit. I, I should love the Lord and I should love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Yeah. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's, if you do those, if we do those things, love God. Mm hmm. If we love God, we're not going to what I call practice sin. In other words, we're not going to get up first thing in the morning and say, mm -hmm. oh, let me see, what kind of sin can I do today? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. bank can I rob? Right, you know, right, right. That's what you call practicing mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. Now, as Christians, we're in the kingdom, but, you know, we mm -hmm. commit sins every day. We tell mm -hmm. the truth, but we didn't get up in the morning with mm -hmm. the intention. Right. It might just, you know, happen or... Mm -hmm. You know, we make a mistake. We fall short. The That's Bible right. says we all fall short. That's right. And so um, Amen. the Great Commission is for the church. And, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have balance in the church. We have to have balance. That's right. You know, take care of the sheep that you have. That's right. But always keep going in to get some new ones. Right. Go get some new ones. In fact, God has given every Christian the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And so we just thank God that um, we have been commissioned to do the Great Commission. You know, like God, we desire that none would perish, right. that all, 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 would, all, come all oh, would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God wants to establish mm -hmm. a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Evangelist Keith is going to lead us in the sinner's prayer. Now really say this with all your heart. If you believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. So let's go through the sinner's prayer. Kneel down wherever you may be and repeat after me. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Have mercy on my soul, a sinner. Have mercy on my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ. Is the son of the living God. Is the son of the living God. That he died on the cross and shed his blood. That he died on the cross and shed his blood. For the forgiveness of my sins. For the forgiveness of my sin. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash all my sins Wash away. Wash all my sins away. In your precious blood. In your precious blood. I believe that you have saved me. I believe you have saved me. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Lord Jesus. For saving my soul. For saving my soul. So we just really are so happy to praise God hallelujah. and thank God hallelujah. that you are now a new creature oh, and really hallelujah. get into a church and get into the word of God. Hallelujah. God is so good. Um, you know, uh, email us at godismen at bellsouth.net and we will send you the We Will Go Ministries newsletter, which will be very helpful to you and some other information to help you in your new Christian journey. What did Jesus say about the Great Commission? Jesus said to go, go into all the world. Jesus said, make disciples. And we said a disciple is a follower of God. 
It's almost kind of like what the kids play, Simon says. Mm. Well, what did Jesus say? Hey. Amen? Amen. And to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and to teach them. What are we teaching? Mm -hmm. We are to teach people the word of God. We love you so much. God loves you. And we thank you so much for tuning in today. We got to go. God is <laughs> ministries and we will go ministries. We got to go. <laughs> Tune in the same time, same place next month. The fourth Monday is at 8.30 p.m. to hear what did Jesus say. God bless you.